Welcome to another installment of Boot Camp for the Saints, where we're going to work on equipping the Saints for life in the world today. With all of this stuff happening, the war in Israel, the open border, crime running rapid in the streets of every city in the United States, uh, all these things happening, we got a new Christian leader in the House of Representatives named Speaker of the House. Now, how do we navigate through all these things and how do we know when something good is actually happening and when something bad is happening? And we know that when we get a Christian uh, voted in as Speaker of the House, the devil is going to you know, do everything he can to mess things up. Anyway, what we really got to do is take a closer look at scripture and how do we take a closer look at scripture well just recently released a video on Matthew 24 taking a look at it in the view of 2023 what do we see new in Matthew 24 uh, with all this stuff happening in 2023 it's a good idea you can look up that video take a look at that one well one of the things we gotta learn to do is learn how to study scripture on our own which most people think they do and some people need a couple of tips and that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna use eSword and show you a couple of tips on how you can study uh, quicker more accurately and more in depth using eSword eSword the free you know Bible program and I have videos on installing eSword and using some of the features on eSword, so we're going to cover some of those today using Matthew 24 as an example. Now, one of the things I noticed when I was doing that, uh, you know, little Bible study in Matthew 24 is this one subject kept on coming up. Uh, Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. Now, this is mentioned not only once, but twice. Oh, here it is three times and we go down a little bit for uh, further and we see it four times and we see it five times five warnings in one chapter about not being deceived why is this such an important subject for Jesus to repeat five times when he's telling them obviously about the end of the world and the signs to come so when we see something repeated like this, we got to ask the question, why is it so important? How do we answer that question? Well, one of the best ways of finding an answer to that is included right in ESORD, which they included the Treasury of Scriptural Knowledge, which is a, like a chain reference. It shows us a scripture that's linked to this particular verse, and I already clicked on Matthew 24 4 uh, Jesus told them don't let anyone mislead you okay let's find out what this links to well uh, when I'm recording these normally pop up and you can read verses but it doesn't work when I'm recording so I have to click on each one of these individually and when I click on one it's kind of a hassle to keep on going back and forth to go along this chain reference. Uh, see, it's trying to pop up over there. But what you can do is you can highlight it and then uh, right click and you can paste it right into, you know, the uh, book commentaries or whatever you want. And I'm going to paste it into the journal notes sitting right over here. So you click on this, and if you have this little problem where it doesn't display correctly, that's pretty easy to fix. So if you have this problem, and this kind of sort of pops up, you highlight it, you right click the mouse button, and you go down to paragraph over here, that's going to pop up this little window. And basically what you want to do is go to line spacing single, and because I'm using 16 point, because I make it a little bit bigger uh, so that you can actually see it on, on a video, you put in 16 and you hit OK and boom, straightens it all out. So there, you just learn something new. Now that we have 
this chain reference, paste it in here, we can take a look at what did the people who made this chain reference think was linked to Jesus' comment. We can see the first one is Jeremiah uh, 29, 8. So we click on that. This takes us right to Jeremiah 28. And like I said, if you've got the reference copied in here, this will bring you up other references to uh, basically the same chain of thought, chain reference, chain of thought reference. And uh, I've got these other ones that I can click on really quick too. And just stick to, okay, what's our original intention? We're going to follow this through based on Matthew 24. Okay, what does Jeremiah say about it? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, the God of Israel says, Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams. Okay, this is pretty interesting because it brings up the fact that when... Uh, Judah, the people in Jerusalem, were taken to Babylon. The devil was going to have people in place to try to deceive them and trick them into lies because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. So, you know, this is going to, no matter, no matter what happens to Israel, no matter how God tries to reach Israel or or. Judah, Jerusalem, whatever you want to call it, uh, the devil is always going to have a plan in place to try to deceive people. Interesting. Okay, let's take a look at Mark 13. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically this is the same story that we see in Matthew 24. Tell us when this will all happen. What sign will show us that these things are about to be fulfilled? basically verbatim so jesus replied do not let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name claiming i am the messiah they will deceive many and we looked up the word messiah messiah means you know someone that's anointed to bring a message so it's you know covers a, a broad range of people and then jesus also mentioned the false prophets later on so we see that in uh, Mark uh, chapter 13, 5 through 6, and then it's repeated in verse 22 again for false messiahs and false prophets. Here we are right here. The false prophets are added to the false messiahs to make sure that, oh, okay, when you're interpreting this word messiah, it's interpreted right here for you. They're linked together. They're, they're one of the same. We'll rise up and perform signs and wonders as to deceive if possible even god's chosen ones watch out i have warned you about this at a time so we can look in luke what is what does luke say about it so basically when we look at luke he replied don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name claiming i am the messiah and saying the time has come but don't believe them so when we go through here, we start collecting little details of what they're trying to deceive us with and all these other things. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Yes, these things must take place first, but the end won't follow immediately. Okay, so we're just, it's, it's, it's just showing you it's a really good way to use a chain reference. It's a good way to collect little bits of information and start putting it together. You can you can copy these things uh, and and uh, start pasting them in your own little journal notes or by subject or whatever. And all you gotta do is highlight it, right click it and paste it in the journal notes and it's right in there for future reference or building your study, whatever you want to do. Okay, Ephesians what did Paul write about this? Then we'll no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Okay, this is, this is a really good reference. 
and you know uh, if 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 you're just gonna just collect things and then go back and study them individually you can co copy and paste these things in here and you got your references right here uh, you got your link right up here to take you back into it but then you can put your notes together pray about it come back to it in a day or two and see what this is and this looks like a really good chapter to read the entire chapter uh, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church the body of Christ this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up the full and complete standard of Christ so this is good information go back study it on your own okay and then this continues on in the next chapter in Ephesians chapter 5 don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins for the anger of God will fall and fall on all who disobey him well which sins obscure stories foolish talk and coarse jokes these are not for you instead let there be thanksgiving to God you can be sure that no immoral impure or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God for a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world don't be fooled by those people don't participate in the things these people do okay good chapter to study so you know Paul wrote a lot about this and don't forget Paul's sense of scripture uh, one of the things you gotta you gotta look for when you're when you're talking about Paul is Paul was an expert of the Old Testament so basically when this to understand Paul Paul references the Old Testament a lot to understand anything that Paul wrote what you got to do is you got to find that Old Testament story Paul referred to. A lot of times he say the prophet Isaiah said, so it kind of gives you a clue. You can take a couple of the key words, you can look it up in the Old Testament. There's a lot of ways of finding it, and a chain reference might might have it. And and here we go. Uh, just see what Jeremiah 29 says. Is this what Paul is referring to? This is what the Lord of the Heavens army says, the God of Israel says, Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams. <coughs> so, there you go. Uh, it brings us right back to, uh, not only was Mark talking about this, referring to these people, uh, what happened in the past, a lesson that we should learn but Paul was also emphasizing that rule in Ephesians and when we get to Colossians we see don't let anyone capture you a pretty strong word here capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ now, doesn't this sound like the new Green Deal? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm just popping this stuff up, and that's the first thought that came into my head. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So, you also are complete through our union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. And we know the new Green Deal and all these other things are basically an attack on God. Uh, did Paul see this but he may not have seen the new Green Deal controlling the weather although Paul did know a lot about the Egyptians and how they tried to control the weather he probably read dozens of books on that and 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 was probably a better expert at that than a lot of us today now this warning Paul also uh, repeated in Colossians 2 verse 18 don't let anyone condemn you by 
insisting on pious self-denial or the worshiping of angels, saying they have had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud. So we got to be careful about people saying they had visions. You know, there's there's a lot of people, I see a lot of comments on social media and stuff to where people will actually say things. And, and, and they're not going to go ahead and start bragging, saying it's a message from God or something, or oh, it was a dream or something. They just get this feeling that they can see what's going to happen, and they'll post it, and sure enough, two or three days later, uh, it comes true. And then a lot of us, a lot more of us, see some things happening, and we see the left, you know, the far left, the, the people that oppose God, start taking an action, and we know how it's going to wind up even before it happens. You know, is this God communicating with us? Nah, it might be, but we'd have to look at specific instances in this. Okay, so we look at Second Thessalonians. Paul again, don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who who brings destruction. Now, basically, we don't know exactly what day Paul is talking about without going through this whole chapter and trying to find out exactly, looking for clues. Uh, this is why I start highlighting these things and in days, you know, things that have to do with timing. It's already begun. So, uh, if you got that, you can, you can skim through here and start looking now, brothers and sisters. So, uh, basically, this word now says it's a continuation of what Paul was talking about in chapter 1. So you can take a look at it. See if you can find something in this timing that Paul is trying to give us about this great rebellion and revealing the lawless one, which is most likely he's referring to the devil. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object to worship he will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. Uh, I just, uh, on one of the social media things, I actually blocked a troll that claims he is God bringing a message directly from heaven to the people on that social media site. You know, I instantly blocked the guy because his message was basically attacking Mike Johnson, who was you know, a Christian who was just elected Speaker of the House. So, yeah, these attacks are going to come. They're going to come from all different directions. Satan's going to use anything he can, anyone he can, to try to spread, you know, this is the stuff we're being warned about. So, uh, when we look at Second Peter, what does Peter say about this? Uh, and actually, we're going to start out in chapter 2, verse 1, but there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their evil teachings and shameful immorality, and because of these teachers, the way of the truth will be slandered. This is all good stuff. This is the kind of stuff you should be copying and pasting. And one thing you want to do is, is make sure you click in here and, and you have your cursor set where you want to copy it. And you can paste it in your journal notes or whatever. And just as a, another lesson, you do a control A, you select everything. We're going to go back to, what is it here? Paragraph. And we're going to do single line spacing and use the same spacing. You can, you can use the same spacing. You can use something a little bit bigger. But that's the kind of spacing it's going to give us. And then after we click on that, oh, it didn't straighten it up. Let me try it again because it should work. Uh, I'm just going to try this on here. But hey, if I repeat these things... Someone out there needs to learn this. So there's a reason for repeating. Okay, I think I hit the cancel. My fault. 
See, you do that, straightens it all out, and we're we're good to go. Okay, and then we got First John. What did John say about this? Uh, dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit will have come from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. Really great information. This is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ is came in a real body that person has the spirit of God and there's actually people out there that argue this point you know but the thing about it is is I don't think this is a really definitive way this is probably one test uh, so that's why John goes on about it. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. So this Antichrist has been you know, present on this world ever since Jesus rose from the grave and, and realistically from uh, that first sin in Eden. So basically, just covered a couple of really quick ways on how you can use eSword to dive deeper into just about anything you want. You know, you can start wherever you want. You follow a chain reference. You paste it in here so that you can follow along and you can collect your, your scriptural text, go back, study it later. So, hey, Let's get to work. Uh, not only are we learning things, but now all of a sudden we start learning five or six or ten or twelve different ways of explaining a subject to someone based on where they are. I used to teach in the Army Reserves, and in the Reserves, it, you know, I taught four wheel vehicle how to repair vehicles. Uh, it was pretty important because he had to teach it in such a way that people had the confidence they could fix it, they could do it quickly and everything else, and they could, in fact, do it under fire or, you know, in the Army during a war when it had to be fixed, fixed right the first time and fixed right and quick. So, uh, basically, I had to be able to explain every single detail in 12 different ways to make sure everybody understood and realistically saving souls is a lot more important than that so let's let's get to work and uh, start getting this stuff done let's equip even more saints and uh, don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like uh, don't forget to share have a great day